Jesus practiced what he preached. Therefore, we need to practice as disciples what we pray in Lord's Prayer. My dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, when we meet our best friends, we converse with them, we speak the words from our heart, genuine words. We share our ups and downs in our life and we don't deliver a long speech there. Rather, we talk and listen to each other. Dear friends, in today's gospel, Jesus teaches us how not to pray and how to pray. First of all, Jesus says not to heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do. One of the ways of Jewish prayer was repetition. They used to pile up every possible title and adjective in the address of the prayer to God. According to our scholar, a famous prayer used to begin this way, Blessed, praised and glorified and exalted, extolled and honored, magnified and lauded be the name of the Holy One. Such kinds of prayers were like intoxication with words. When one begins to think more of how one is praying than of what one is praying, his or her prayer remains only as worship of lips. Among Jews, there was a tendency towards long prayers. They had a saying, whoever is long in prayer, their prayer is heard. Jesus also noticed that certain Jews prayed so that people would see that they are praying and they are pious people. The Jew prayed standing with hands stretched out, palms upwards and with head bowed. This system of prayer made ostentation or pretension very easy. For them, prayer had to be said at 9 a.m., 12 midday and 3 p.m. It had to be said wherever they might be. Many of them made sure that during these hours, they are at a busy street corner or crowded city square so that all the world might see and admire their exceptional piety. By observing these ways how they were praying, Jesus lays down two great rules of prayer. First, he says, All prayers must be offered to God. What Jesus criticized when people prayed was that they were praying to people, not to God. They used words to please people and the words were not from their heart to please God. Secondly, Jesus insists that we must always remember that the God to whom we pray is a God of love who is more ready to answer that we are to pray. His gifts and grace can't be extracted from His unwillingness. He provides what He wills good for us. We do not come to a God who is to be coaxed to answer our prayer how we want it to be answered. Dear friends, we need to remember we come to that God whose one desire is to give. This thought, this realization is sufficient to go to God with desire in our hearts and words on our lips saying, Thy will be done. What does Jesus tell about how to pray? The popular prayer, Our Father, which we have in today's Gospel is taught by Jesus to His disciples. The Lord's Prayer is not a child's prayer as it is often regarded, or it is not a family prayer as it is sometimes called, unless by the word family we mean the family of the church. The Lord's Prayer is specifically and definitely stated to be the disciples' prayer. The Lord's Prayer can only really be prayed when the man who prays may it be a child or may be a member of a family, knows what he is saying and he cannot know the meaning until he has become the disciple of Jesus. To be disciple of Jesus is becoming like him, practicing what Jesus taught. Jesus practiced what he preached. Therefore, we need to practice as disciples what we pray in Lord's Prayer. Dear friends, we notice the order of petitions in Lord's Prayer. The first three petitions have to do with God and the glory of God. The second three petitions have to do with our needs and necessities. That is to say, God is given His supreme place 
and then we turn ourselves and our needs and desires it is only when god is given his proper place that all things fall into their proper places prayer must never be an attempt to bend the will of god to our desires prayer is always an attempt to submit our will to the will of god the second part of prayer deals with the three essential needs of man first it asks for bread that which is necessary for the maintenance of life second it asks for forgiveness bringing the past into the presence of god and of god's forgiving grace third it asks for help in temptation thereby committing all the future into the hands of god in these three petitions we are taught to lay the present the past and the future before the throne of god thus dear friends may we pray every day lord's prayer meaningfully as his disciples and lay down our past future and present before his throne of grace